Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa sallallahu tabaraka wa ta'ala wa sallam ala sayyidina Muhammadin. Sayyidina wa sanadina wa habibina wa shafi'ina wa maulana. Sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa azwajihi wa dhurriyatihi wa ahli baytihi wa man tabi'ahum bi ihsanin ila yawmiddin wa ba'd. Alhamdulillah, mashallah, we reached the near to the end of the 14th fast day. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept this fast from us uh, and accept all of the fasts of Ramadan uh, from us and facilitate for us the fast of whatever is left in Ramadan, which uh, a scary thought is that there's not a whole lot. There's not a whole lot. Tonight's going to be the 15th night. And then uh, after that, we're going to say that uh, it's it's uh, majority of the, the blessing is over. So whoever wants to take, let them uh, let them take now. And, uh, 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 you know, whoever is going to miss out uh, now is going to miss out uh, indeed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. So continuing with our uh, 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 silsila, our... Um, our theme of going through the heroes of Islam, and having shifted from the uh, uh, from the uh, prophets alayhim salatu salam to the companions or the Allahu anhum, uh, I thought it would be a good opportunity for us, especially given that during the year um, we we had started a a, a chain about. Um, the Ashara Mubasharim Bil Jannah. One of the brothers, one of the good brothers, Coach Kahari Hicks from from the east side of uh, of the city. He had called me and asked. He said, "What was it that was so special about those ten companions that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala gave them the glad tidings of paradise uh, in this world?" And I said, "That's a really good question. You know, it re it, it uh, requires some more in depth uh, uh, discussion, and it requires some more in depth analysis." And so I told him, why don't you come every Tuesday night uh, uh, from from uh, the east side to Parma. And uh, every Tuesday night after Isha, we'll discuss the lives of one of them. And so we got through, I think, out of 10, we got through um, five of them and then five of them remain. And the five that remain are the Khulafa Rashidun and uh, Talhat ibn Ubaidillah, radiallahu ta'ala anhum. So I think maybe that's a logical place to uh, continue, inshallah, our discussion. Uh, is to first go through the Khulafa Rashidun, and then uh, thereafter to go through uh, to go through the uh, Sayyidina Talha ibn Ubaidillah before switching, inshallah, in the last part of Ramadan to people of the later parts of the Ummah that are also heroes of uh, of the Ummah. So we continue today with Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu. Uh, after the death of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his uh, vice gerency is Khilafa in every aspect. Uh, devolved to Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu. So we say that Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq is not only the successor of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa in terms of political authority, although definitely he was, uh, to argue against that is uh, just to uh, argue against what's known as a matter of fact. But uh, uh, the belief of the Ahl sunnah al Jama'ah that is that uh, uh, Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq is the Khalifa of the Prophet sallallahu in every aspect, not just temporal. So the word Khalifa means what? The one that you leave behind. The one that you leave behind to look after things after you're gone. Uh, and so uh, by virtue of the bay'ah, the oath of allegiance that the Muhajirin and Ansar uh, made to him, he was appointed Khalifa. And uh, the Quranic verses allude to Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq's uh, Khilafa, uh, uh, the uh, hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in this regards are, are explicit. Uh, the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that Allah and the believers uh, 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 refused to accept anyone but Abu Bakr uh, being a, an explicit uh, uh, pronouncement in the favor of Abu Bakr being the successor of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So in this, in this regard, uh, the, the, the belief of the Ahlul Sunnah al Jama'ah is such that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam didn't explicitly leave behind any instructions with regards to who his uh, temporal successor should be, who the political leader of the Muslim should be after the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam passes from this world. Um, and so we say that the political appointment of Abu Bakr Siddiq was through mashra, through shura, and Allah Ta'ala describes the believers as, وَأَمْرُهُمْ shura بَيْنَهُمْ that they are such a people that their affair is decided by mutual consultation. They don't rule by dictate 
uh, uh, rather, uh, they rule through mutual consultation. And this is exactly what happened when the Prophet ﷺ passed away. The Ansar had a, a, a mashra, they had a shura that they held between them. And uh, 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 Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu and Sayyidina Umar attended that shura and uh, uh, basically uh, convinced them that the, the their, by necessity one of the muhajirin had to be a, a, a mir, had to be leader after the Prophet ﷺ. Uh, but however, uh, on the flip side, the uh, you know hadith of the Prophet ﷺ regarding the spiritual successorship of the Prophet ﷺ uh, being in the uh, in the hands of Abu Bakr Siddiq is is uh, I think uh, I think something that's very clear, and this is one of the one of the one of the few reasons, not the only reason, one of the reasons that the aqidah the Ahlus Sunnah al Jama'ah is that from the uh, companions of the the most uh, the second in in, in virtue. Uh, after the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the ummah is Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu. The most important consideration in this regard is total accord between the hearts of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq. This has been clearly stated by Hafiz ibn Hajar radiallahu anhu in his Lami' uh, volume 2 page 452. Numerous incidents bear testimony to the mutual accord and unity of their hearts. Uh, for example, the anecdote of uh, 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 Abu al-Hathim's invitation which has already been explained uh, in an earlier chapter it's from the book that we're reading the biography of Abu Bakr Siddiq uh, written by Hazrat Shaykh Zakaria Kandlawi rahimahullah ta'ala he uh, says that also on the occasion of Hudaybiyah the answers which Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu gave to the answers of Sayyidina Umar were the same as those given by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam although he Abu Bakr was not aware thereof Regarding the captives of Badr, the opinion of Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu conformed to the opinion of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Meaning what? That when they were uh, captives after the battle of Badr, the, uh, uh, Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu, his opinion was that the captives should be executed. And Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu, uh, his, uh, um, his uh, opinion was against that. And the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's opinion was closer in accord to that of Abu Bakr Siddiq than that of Umar. The description of Abu Bakr Siddiq given by Ibn Dhunna uh, conforms to the description of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam given uh, by uh, Sayyidina Khadija Radiallahu Anha. Uh, meaning what? That they actually physically looked alike as well. And this is something that's recorded by the Muhaddithun that uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he made it to uh, when he made it to Medina Munawwara after the Hijrah um, and him and Abu Bakr Siddiq were coming down the way into Medina Munawwara and the children were singing Tala al-Badru alayna and waving their palm branches in uh, celebration and, and to welcome him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The uh, uh, Ansar didn't know which one was Abu Bakr and which one was the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And part of it is because they, they looked alike. They, they actually physically resembled one another. And uh, um, part of it is also that they were very, uh, they had a very similar nur about them. They had a very similar spiritual state uh, uh, about them. Not to say that the state of Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq was the same as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, far from it. Uh, but uh, uh, to a person who was blinded by both of them at the same time and overwhelmed by both of them at the same time, it's hard for them to tell the difference. And so the Ansar radiallahu anhum didn't know who the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was and who Abu Bakr was until... Um, they saw that the, the muhajirun, the rest of them, they went and crowded around Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq unfurled his shawl. He uh, opened his shawl up and he shaded the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from the sun. So then they knew who, who was Rasulullah and who was uh, Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu. In addition to these clear indications of the succession, uh, uh, Sayyidina Abu Bakr's Khilafah was established by the popular bay'ah of the companions of the Allah after the passing of the uh, most honored Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And so this is something that's known by uh, consensus that Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq was, was Khalifa by consensus. Not one of the companions of the Allah who held back from it. Uh, all of them eventually will take bay'ah them, uh, you know, individually from Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu, the consensus being uh, completely and, and firmly established thereby. According to the most authoritative version, his name was Abdullah. Uh, during the time of Jahiliyyah, his name was Abdul Ka'bah. Uh, some say that his name was Atiq. 
Uh, however, uh, uh, it is more reliable to say that Atiq was his laqab, it was his title. So the Arabs, when a person has a name, they have an ism, they have a kunya, and they have a, a laqab. The ism is the name your mother gives you. Uh, the kunya is your honorific title, Abu this or Abu that. And the laqab is is, is the uh, the title. So for example, Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu, his name is ism, his name is Umar. And his uh, 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 kunya is Abu Hafs, and his uh, uh, laqab is Amir al-Mu'mineen. Uh, and so uh, the title, the title Atiq was his title. His name was Abdul Kaaba in uh, the, the the slave of the Kaaba in Jahiliyyah. And then the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam changed it to Abdullah in his, in uh, in the uh, in, in the age of Islam. And his title was Atiq. Abu Bakr is his kunya. His genealogical tree is Abdullah, the son of Abu Quhafa, the son of Amir, the son of Amr, the son of Kaab, the son of Tamim, the son of Murra, the son of Kaab, the son of Luay, the son of Ghalib, uh, Al Qarashi at Taymi. And so uh, 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 Murra is the, 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 the ancestor that uh, Abu Bakr has in common with the Prophet. So uh, Abu, uh, Abdullah bin Abu Qahafa bin Amir bin Amr bin Kaab bin Tamim bin Murrah. Uh, uh, Murrah is the, the, the ancestor in common he has with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The lineage of Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu meets with the uh, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at Murrah bin Kaab. The name of his father, Abu Quhafa, was Uthman, who embraced Islam in the uh, eighth year of Nabuwa at the age of 90. And there's a very uh, touching story with regards to that. It's narrated by Hakim in his Mustadrak that the Prophet uh, uh, Abu Bakr Siddiq, in the heat of the midday on the day of Fath, on the day of conquest, he brought his father to the Prophet وسلم, in order to accept Islam, that he hadn't accepted Islam hitherto. And on the day of the conquest, that was when he accepted Islam. And so the Prophet ﷺ in his shafaqah and his kindness, his softness, he told Abu Bakr Siddiq, he says that, Ya Abu Bakr, uh, would you have just told us we would have gone to, uh, gone to him that instead of making this uh, honored uh, elder of Quraysh uh, have to walk in the midday heat in order to get to me, we wouldn't have put him through the trouble. We would have at least just gone to him. And Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu, he uh, replied, uh, he said, no, Ya Rasulullah, he, he needs, he's in need of the, the, the ajr and the reward of going through the difficulty of coming to you. And so uh, Abu Bakr Siddiq put the two hands of his father into the Mubarak hands of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he began to weep. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, uh, uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, uh, um, uh, ya Abu Bakr, what makes you weep? He says, oh, your, oh, Messenger of Allah. He said, I would have rather put the two hands of your uncle Abu Talib in your hands this day uh, than those of my own father. Meaning I would have rather seen the day that Abu, Abu Talib, your uncle that you loved so much, that he accepts Islam, uh, even more so than, than the joy that I have right now for, for my father accepting Islam. And the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, asked him, Ya Abu Bakr, why is that? He said, Ya Rasulullah, because I know it would have made you happier. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself uh, 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 wept. And he said, you're right. He said, you're right. And this is the thing is, these are, these are very hard and difficult moments. Only a person, you know, a person who's self-interested would never have, would have just been like, oh, look how happy, you know, like how happy this is for us and for all of us. And they wouldn't really have seen past that. And uh, we all narrate the hadith uh, of, of Sayyidina Umar uh, radiallahu anhu that the Prophet sallam, said that one of you won't believe, meaning won't perfect their belief until I'm more beloved to them than their parents and their children and then all other people. Uh, but these people, you know, they didn't just narrate that. That wasn't just like a hadith that they quoted with one another in arguments. That was a reality for them. That was a reality for them. He says that uh, his father, Abu Quhafa Uthman, he embraced uh, Islam at the age of 90 years in the eighth year of the Prophet, of, of, of the Hijra of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu was known by a variety of titles. According to Sayyidina Aisha radiallahu anha, uh, uh, 
uh, while the people in the house would call him Abdullah, he was generally known by his title Atiq. Some people say that he was called Atiq because of his handsomeness. Others say uh, uh, that it was on account of his eagerness for virtue. Another view is that he was called so because his lineage was free of the slightest blemish. Uh, according to the narration of Tirmidhi, the reason for Atiq, uh, 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 him being called Atiq, is his the announcement of his salvation from Jannah, the Jeff from Jahannam Afwan. So Atiq in Arabic it means uh, it means for a slave to be manumitted, and it is the same manumitted meaning freed from slavery. And so it's the same uh, expression that is used uh, by the Prophet wasallam for a person who has been uh, delivered from the hellfire. That's a, such a so and so for so and so is a itqum min an nar that uh, that person receives uh, receives manumission or freedom, being freed from the the, the slavery of the hellfire. Well, iyalu billah Allah Taala yajalunna kullana min utaqai shahri Ramadan and utaqai hadhi leila. Allah Taala make all of us from those who are written that will be freed from the hellfire in this month of Ramadan and in, in, in this particular night of Ramadan. His famous title, however, that he's most well known for is a Siddiq. There's a difference of opinion regarding when he was awarded this title. According to some, he was known by this blessed title even in the age of ignorance before Islam because of his outstanding quality of truthfulness. However, the well-known version is that on the occasion of the Mi'raj that the Prophet ﷺ took the night journey to uh, Jerusalem and to uh, the heavens, uh, uh, to Al-Quds al-Sharif and to uh, Al-Jannah, um, the Messenger of Allah وسلم, was apprehensive about people acknowledging the truth of his miraculous journey. Uh, Jibreel uh, uh, assured him that uh, 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 that uh, Jibreel alayhi salam assured him, the most honored Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam that Abu Bakr will acknowledge his truth because he is Siddiq. And the uh, 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 in in uh, the uh, Mustadrak, um, uh, it is recorded that uh, uh, Nazal bin uh, Subra said, we asked Ali regarding Abu Bakr Siddiq. He said he's a man who was given the title Siddiq by Allah, by the agency of Jibreel alayhi salam and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. In Salat, he was a representative of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, meaning it was known in Medina if the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam for whatever reason wasn't able to lead the prayer that uh, Abu Bakr would lead it. And uh, the man whom the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam chose for our deen, we chose him for our, our dunya. And uh, the you know the story the story with regards to the you know him being called Siddiq was that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam had had said that you know he proclaimed to the people that Allah had taken him to Jannah to to the heavens and taken him to the Quds Sharif in that night and uh, uh, mockingly the Mushrikeen the idolaters of Quraysh asked him well then tell us you know like uh, you know give us some proof and the prophet ﷺ actually described the caravans that were traveling to mecca from syria uh, uh, and but you know obviously they're not there they're not going to be there for several days and so uh, that meant nothing to them at the time and uh, uh, so what happened was they started to make fun of the prophet ﷺ. they made fun of the prophet ﷺ so much that there were uh, some people who actually left Islam because of it, because of because it was too much for them. The mockery was too much for them to take. And uh, um, Abu Bakr Siddiq, on the other hand, when they came to him and said, "Hey, look, your friend said he went to Jerusalem in one night," Abu Bakr Siddiq said, "Like, I don't know if did he really say that or not. You know, I don't, I don't recall you. I don't, I don't, I don't consider you guys to be a, a reliable." transmitters or narrators of what the Prophet ﷺ says. But if he said it, if he said it, it's true. He said, if he said it, it's true. And uh, Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu said that I believe something even more, uh, even more uh, far-fetched than that, which is that he receives wahi, he received revelation from above the seven heavens. He says, so what is the big deal that a person should go to Jerusalem in one night and come back? Which is very keen. It's actually r rationally a very keen observation. Uh, now we live in an age where it's very easy for a person to traverse the amount of distance it takes to get from Jerusalem to uh, Mecca in one night and come back. That's not a big deal. People, uh, you know, cut double and triple that amount of uh, of journey um, in a night very easily. But still, uh, the trust that he had in the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, being the messenger of Allah, that was that was the cornerstone of uh, of his his faith. 
And so uh, he received this title, Siddiq. And Siddiq doesn't just mean that a person who's Sadiq. Sadiq means a person who's truthful. Siddiq is is the wasn't a fi'il. It's a it's a, an extremely intense and an extremely emphatic form that's not commonly used, and uh, 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 it's actually uh, interesting because it's it's I think uncommon amongst the the Arabs, and it's uh, 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 not only uncommon amongst the Arabs. It actually ha is a, a phrase which is it means in uh, in Hebrew something like sainthood. Uh, 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 is essentially the, the Hebrew way of saying it. It's the term in the Bible for somebody who's like a man of God, uh, to a, a person of, of who's like a wali of Allah. Um, and so this is the, the, the title that Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa gave him because of the, the, the veracity of his state. He was, he was true. He was real. He wasn't fake. He wasn't fake in his iman. Some people do that, that look, you know, I'm Muslimer than thou. And they'll argue with people and like, you know, they'll argue with people about like, you know, how you're supposed to move your finger in the tashahud and they'll, you know, argue to, you know, uh, until they'll get to blows. And that person knows they didn't pray Fajr that day and they didn't pray it yesterday and they won't pray it tomorrow either. Um, that type of fakery is why people hate religion. Uh, whereas Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq, his type of realness, you know, is why people love it and see that it's a sign of the Lord. Right, uh, 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 Allah Ta'ala says that we will show them our signs in the horizons and in their own selves. Uh, that, that we, we have our mind manifest signs in the hearts of those people who were given knowledge. Uh, and so there are people like Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu that they're the proofs, the walking proofs of the Lord in the earth that it's impossible to think that somebody would have so much faith uh, so as to be uh, like this person. And, uh, you know, Allah Ta'ala, Allah Ta'ala, uh, 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 Allah Ta'ala, uh, be pleased with them. That's all we can do is make dua for them and show Allah our love for such people as a means of, uh, of pleasing him. According to Tabarani, Hakim bin Sa'd uh, narrated that uh, Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu took an oath that the title of Siddiq was revealed uh, uh, by Allah uh, from the heavens for Abu Bakr, meaning that it's not just something the Prophet said, but it's actually part of Wahi. Uh, Abu Bakr uh, radiallahu anhu's acceptance of Islam. From amongst the per first persons to accept Islam was Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And uh, we say from amongst the first persons because it's known that say the Khadija radiallahu anha accepted Islam before him. Uh, when he presented himself to the most honored messenger sallallahu alayhi wa to accept Islam, he did not request any miracle to be displayed. He only asked about the prophethood and immediately accepted Islam. According to Sayyidina uh, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he discerned a degree of uncertainty in everyone who he'd ever presented Islam to except for Abu Bakr. Uh, radiallahu anhu, who accepted Islam without the slightest hesitation. So everybody took them a minute to think about it. Everybody, they had some doubt in their mind that they had to assuage. Uh, there was some issue in their head that, that caused them to hold back for just a moment. Whereas Abu Bakr Siddiq, that's it. He sees, you know, the, the thing is, they were friends. They were friends even in Jahiliyyah. You know, they, they enjoyed each other's company even in Jahiliyyah. Abu Bakr Siddiq knew the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He knew he's not a liar. He knew he's not like a bad person. He knew like the incredible amount of khair that, that was there in him. So the moment he said, he said, it just like made sense to him. It didn't require any further explanation or any further, uh, uh, any further, uh, uh, you know, clarification. It was just, he said it and he said, yeah, you're right. And uh, he, he was with him from the very beginning. In the initial uh, and inceptional stages of Islam, the most honored companions concealed their religion because of the opp oppression and persecution of the uh, hostile of the disbelievers. When the Muslims numbered 39, Abu Bakr requested permission to pro propagate Islam publicly. After persisting in his request, the most honored Prophet وسلم, consented, taking a small group with him. Uh, Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq went to the house of Allah, meaning the Kaaba itself, and delivered a speech. This was the very first khutbah of Islam. Although his prominence and honor were accepted in the community, as he commenced his khutbah, he was so severely assaulted that his face was dyed red with his blood. His nose, his ears were badly wounded. It was difficult to recognize him. He was beaten, pushed, and kicked. 
They did with him whatever they desired. The severity of the assault rendered him unconscious. His tribesmen brought him home, where he revived, uh, came back to consciousness during the evening. His first uh, words that came to his lips were, How is Muhammad? Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. On hearing these words, uh, those family members who were caring for him left. They were astonished and angered because of his demotion for a man who was indirectly the cause for his calamity which he had suffered. His mother, Umm al-Khair, insisted that he partake of some food and drink, but he took an oath that as long as he had not seen the Messenger of Allah, he will neither eat nor drink. After the greater part of the night had passed and all was quiet, he went to the Messenger of Allah وسلم, and he cried profusely. As did the most honored Prophet The companions too broke down with grief and were in tears. In this meeting, Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq anhu requested that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa make dua for the guidance of his mother. The dua was made and she embraced Islam the same day. A separate volume is required to record the life story of Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu, irrespective of the brevity of the biography one wishes to write. How is it possible to write comprehensively on even one aspect in these few pages? The fact that he was the first to accept Islam is of the greatest significance. This act of his requires considerate elaboration. Then there is the episode of his contemplated migration to Abyssinia. He set out with this intention, but along the way met, met Ibn Dughunna, who pers persuaded him to return. Ibn Dughunna said, A man of your caliber can neither be expelled nor leave of his own accord. You are the source of livelihood of the destitute. You are the one who is kind to his relatives. You lift the burden uh, uh, of people. You are hospitable and aid others in their affairs. Which interesting, uh, interestingly enough is the same uh, um, the same thing that Sayyidina Khadija radiallahu anha said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he was afraid that he, uh, um, when he was afraid when he first received the revelation. And, uh, you know, the story behind it is that the, uh, the, the Quraysh, uh, they removed and they withheld their tribal protection from Abu Bakr Siddiq to punish him for, being, for accepting Islam, uh, meaning what, that anyone could do anything to him and no one would retaliate. And so this Ibn Dughunna actually went back to the Kaaba and took Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq anhum by the hand when he was about to leave to Abyssinia and in front of everybody, ashhad, in front of all of them, he said that I give my tribal protection to this Abu Bakr. If anybody messes with him or touches him, he's going to mess with me and I'll take vengeance on his behalf. So let him go and, and uh, uh, live in peace. Referring to Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq anhu, the Quran says, the second of two when both were in the cave, when he said to his uh, companion, do not grieve, verily Allah is with us. This verse in Surah At-Tawbah is very important. It's uh, something to keep in mind about the great rank of the uh, of, of Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq anhu, that Allah Ta'ala mentions in the, in the cave of Thor. The uh, the story which was well known to all the companions that the Prophet ﷺ and Abu Bakr Siddiq who the two of them they made hijrah together that uh, 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 that uh, that when they were hiding in the cave of Thor that the Prophet ﷺ, when there were only two of them when the Prophet ﷺ said to his companion don't grieve in Allah ma'ana that indeed Allah is with us. And uh, uh, Allah is with us means what? It's a testimony to the, the faith of Abu Bakr Siddiq. And Allah being with us meaning what? Allah Ta'ala being with us being, meaning what? That it's also a testimony that he was a, a, a Muslim. And when Allah is with somebody, he doesn't withdraw his support from that person. This is part of the aqid of the Ahl Sunnah al Jama'ah that Allah Ta'ala is not subject to time and space. Uh, uh, and so when Allah Ta'ala is something, He is that thing. It's not something that can then be changed. <laughs> you 
it neither changes nor is it transferred for you know from one state to the other and, uh, and so for that reason uh, the the fuqaha mentioned that whoever uh, whoever uh, casts an aspersion on the faith of abu bakr meaning that saying that he's not a believer that that person has denied uh, a verse of the quran and whoever denies a verse of the quran has denied islam itself <laughs> The companionship of Abu Bakr with Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is confirmed absolutely uh, by this Quranic ayah. Every word of this Quranic statement attests to the lofty status of Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq. May Allah Ta'ala be pleased with him. There are numerous uh, uh, conspicuous, uh, uh, conspicuous uh, uh, evidences confirming uh, his love and devotion for the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. His migration to Medina in the company of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is very significant. What can someone uh, say or uh, write about his excellences and uh, you know with regards to that uh, uh, with regards to that uh, um, you know story Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq when the permission was given to migrate to Medina Munawwara he was one of the first ones who wanted to go once he realized that it was the the wish of the Prophet Sallallahu to make Hijra um, he was one of the first ones to want to comply with that order and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi would always tell him stay stay you know like when it's time I'll let you know and uh, finally, the reason became clear, which is what is it? The Prophet ﷺ wanted him to go be his companion, his partner. Um, he wanted to make sure that the weak and those people who might have trouble getting out, get out first. And then finally, when it was time uh, to leave, then he wanted to take Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq with him, radiallahu anhu, which is really, is really important. Only, you know, those are the only the only people who were held back were those people who were closest, right? Who else was held back? Sayyidina Ali was held back, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Uh, why? For two reasons, one is that uh, uh, that that uh, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he used him as a decoy in his house when he slipped away, so that the mushrikeen would think that he's still home. And this was also a very heroic sacrifice on his part. Inshallah, we'll talk about that when we talk about his chapter as well. Uh, uh, anhu uh, uh, But uh, more than that, the reason he kept Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu back was because the mushrikeen of Quraysh, despite being his uh, greatest enemy they uh trusted him so much because of his truthfulness that they would keep their deposits uh, safe with him so if somebody needed to keep a trust with the uh, somebody they would keep it uh, and trust it with the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so he kept Sayyidina ali back so that those trusts could all be returned and then Sayyidina ali himself would uh, uh would uh, go on the in the hijra he would set out and he was only a teenager at the time he was 18 or 19 years old at the time so they didn't uh, they didn't think much of, of holding him back or or uh, letting him go in Surah Al-Layl, there are praises of the one who spends in the path of Allah Ta'ala. This pertains to Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu who, end, who rendered uh, his acts of charity for the pleasure of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala. He has also given the glad tidings of Jannah. Uh, 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 Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala says in the Surah Al-Layl, Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Surah Al-Layl in the uh, honor of uh, Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu. وَمَا لَهُ مِنْ نِعْمَةٍ وَمَا لِي أَحَدٍ عِنْدَهُ مِنْ نِعْمَةٍ تُجْزَى إِلَّا بْتِغَاءَ وَجْهِ رَبِّهِ الْأَعْلَى وَلَسَوْفَ يَرْضَى uh, uh, the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that, that there is such a person that there is that, that, that spends in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and gives in charity to the poor um, and there's no re recompense there's no reward that will be sufficient for him uh, except for the face of uh, 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 of of your Lord the most high meaning what so when we say the face of Allah ta'ala what do we mean um, one is that it's an expression uh, amongst the Arabs, you know, like that you only did it, you know, sincerely and only for that person's happiness. And the second is what is that the Prophet ﷺ said that the people will see Allah in Jannah. And so some people, you know, you ask a kid, like, what do you want to have in Jannah? Some kid's going to be like, I want to have like a big bag, bag of Cheetos. Khalasi, son, you get a big bag, bag of Cheetos. What do you want? I want my little pony. Okay, my sweetheart, inshallah, you'll get a, my little pony in Jannah. And then people get older and so they want other things. You know, someone says, you know, uh, uh, um, you know, the, you know, the, so, you know, a sister will say, well, I want to have a huge house, a huge mansion. She'll get it. And then someone asks the brothers and then he'll be like, is my wife around? Uh, 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 yes. Oh yeah. I want a big house in Jannah as well or whatever, uh, you know, they'll say, uh, but 
but but what there are some people from amongst the believers, their iman in Allah Ta'ala and their faith and their love for Allah Ta'ala is such as what that they don't, you know, the thing that they dream about in Jannah is not uh, uh, worldly things. Not that they don't like worldly things, you know, we all like worldly things, otherwise, we're not human. Um, but uh, their their love and their desire for Allah Ta'ala is the thing that caused them to say no to those worldly things in this world. Uh, and so in that world, their longing and their desire to see Allah and to be uh, to to be with Allah Taala without any separation, which was the desire of and longing of our father Adam Alayhi when he was removed from Jannah in the first place. That 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 will that overtakes them and that desire overtakes their other desires and their, that motivation overtakes other motivations to the point where it becomes the motive that people you know. Uh, that you know that pushes people to do what they do in this world, and so say Allah Taala describes Abu Bakr Siddiq radiAllahu anhu in that wal layl ila yarsha in the Surah Al Layl uh, as being aladhi yuti malahu yatazakka wa mali ahadin andahu min nirmat and tujza that that person who gives out his uh, purifies his uh, wealth through giving charity, uh, and, and that person there's nobody owns any reward that would be sufficient for that person. The only reward that will be sufficient for them is to see the face of the Lord uh, 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 most high. And then then that day they'll be happy. They'll be content. That will be enough. Allah Ta'ala give all of us the happiness of such a day, even if we don't deserve it. Allah give us from uh, from his generosity if, 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 if we don't earn it from our own deeds. Uh, in his attributes and character, he was unique. On the occasion of uh, uh, the irtidad or the uh, apostasy from Islam of various tribes after the Prophet ﷺ passed away, he displayed unparalleled courage which stunned even the brave Umar radiallahu anhu who had cautioned against, cautioned against immediate action. Rejecting the proffered advice of caution, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu taunted Umar for his indecisiveness in dealing with the apostates. Uh, and thus he said, "Ajabaron fil jahiliyati wa khawaron fil Islam." He said, "Oh, Omar, were you a, a tyrant in jahiliya and a coward in Islam?" Uh, which, you know, nobody who was concerned with their own safety would say something like that to Sayyidina Omar. But uh, Sayyidina Omar, radiyallahu anhu, he took the rebuke because he knew uh, Abu Bakr Siddiq wasn't just you know talking smack; that he was speaking from a point of of, of, of unshakable faith. Sayyidina Omar's testimony is ample evidence for the lofty status of Sayyidina Abu Bakr's knowledge, virtues, generosity, munificence, piety, forbearance, patience, humility, intelligence, and expertise in the interpretations of dreams, in the knowledge of genealogy, prose, and eloquence. Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu said, whoever narrates a hadith to him, he would, as a precautionary measure, put the narrator under oath, except for Abu Bakr, he was far above this measure. Meaning he didn't accept, expect that Abu Bakr was able to lie in the first place. So he would not uh, he would not ask that person to swear an oath to the truthfulness of what they were, of what they were saying. This true and devoted companion and successor of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam embodied in him every excellence and qualification to the degree of perfection. A few anecdotes pertaining to the abundance of his worship and the force of his faith, uh, which are the basis of the, the, the spiritual path toward Allah, will now be presented. Ibn Asakir records the narration of Ibn Sirin, which appears, uh, in which it appears that Abdul Rahman, the son of Abu Bakr, who had not yet uh, embraced Islam, had joined the kuffar, the disbelievers, on the day of the Battle of Badr. Uh, one day after uh, he had embraced Islam, he said to his father, in Badr, you were in my line of action. However, being my father, I turned away from, from, from uh, harming you. In other words, although he was in a position to slay his father, uh, 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 he did not do so due to his paternal consideration. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu replied, if you had come in front of me, I would not have hesitated in dispatching you. Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu was originally a traitor. According to historians, he uh, possessed 40,000 dinars or golden coins, which is a lot of money, which is a, a, a lot of money, 40,000 dinars. Each dinar is, uh, um, each dinar is uh, uh, four grams of gold, so about $200. So, uh, you know, uh, that's uh, 200 times uh, 40,000 
is uh, 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 80 uh, and then times 10 is 800, it's about $8 million. It's a great deal of money. He continued to spend his wealth in the sake of Islam until finally uh, he brought uh, whatever was left to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam once uh, for a cam campaign and he finished it all off. When the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam inquired of what provisions he left for uh, his family, he replied, I have left for them Allah and his Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu was always awaiting an opportunity to surpass Abu Bakr Siddiq in an act of virtue. On this particular day, he had brought along considerable wealth. When the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked him uh, what he, he had brought as his contribution, uh, he, uh, uh, he, he, uh, and what he had left for his family, uh, he said he had left half of what he had owned for his family and the other half of his uh, wealth was his contribution. He was under, under the impression that this day he would uh, surpass Abu Bakr. But when he learned that Abu Bakr's an uh, what Abu Bakr's answer was uh, earlier, he understood that he would never be able to surpass him in virtue. Precisely on this account and on the account of his manifold excellencies, Abu Bakr Siddiq, uh, anhu, uh, 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 the manifold excellencies of Abu Bakr Siddiq, anhu, did the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam say that beside Abu Bakr Siddiq, he had already uh, compensated everyone for their favors that that they did to him, except for Abu Bakr. He says Abu Bakr will be compensated only on the day of judgment by Allah. So inshallah, this is inshallah a good place to stop. There's a, there's a, a number of accounts left in the uh, in the uh, in the chapter, but uh, we'll decide inshallah whether to continue and finish or whether to move on uh, tomorrow. But suffice to say that uh, uh, you know, mashallah, the Islam was built uh, by people who came to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, not expecting. Uh, uh, you know, to be uh, given like, a, you know, a prize for, for accepting Islam, but ha for, ex for actually coming with the spirit of service. And uh, the, 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 the ones whose Iman was the highest were the ones who were the most selfless in that service. I mean, imagine that uh, $8 million worth of wealth amassed from trading in those days um, and all of it to be uh, completely consumed in the path of Allah Ta'ala to the point where, you know, Sayyidina Bilal radiallahu anhu, when people would uh, praise him, he said, what am I? I'm nothing but a good deed of Abu Bakr Siddiq. Meaning what? He was being tortured to death by his slave master Umayyah for refusing to worship idols. And Abu Bakr Siddiq showed up when he was on the verge of death and bought him. Uh, and no one would pay for a slave at that time because he's already like been broken. But, you know, there, no one expects that anything good will come out of him. He paid paid for him uh, a good price. And, uh, uh, you know, like like that, he spent all of his money left and right feeding the poor and ransoming, ransoming the slaves and, and serving the cause of Islam until he, uh, he had nothing left. Um, imagine what will the reward of that person be that the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who is the muhsin, uh, 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 the one who did good by the entire creation that uh, if he says that I've recompensed everybody with, by my sacrifices and my work for them in this world except for Abu Bakr Siddiq he'll be rewarded on the day of judgment Allah is the one who's going to uh, recompense him of his reward Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us from the love of these people uh, something that will save us in this world and give us a good uh, example to cling hold firm to in this world and save us on the day of judgment yawm al ahwali wal afat wa sallallahu tabarak wa ta'ala wa sallam ala sayyidina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun wa salamun ala al-mursaleen walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh